I'm sorry that you can't see my face in this video, Willie, but you know exactly what I look like. And I like your video, man. You, know, you let people feel you, man. I felt that video. So let me give you a little insight. You know, a lot of people really don't know my background either. So I'm going to break it down a little easier than you. My mama is a pimp. My father was a pimp. My grandmother ran a card house. My great-grandmother was pretty much a loan shark. Um, I grew up in a house full of women. Uh, it was tough growing up in the early 70s. I mean, you got to see some serious drama. You got to see black people disrespected. You got to see women come into power. As un other, uh, you may not think much about certain shit, but the women in the black community hold all of the power. That's one thing that those brothers who are out there selling crack, selling weed, hustling, and even going to work, the woman is the stronger in the black community. And if you can't see it, then you don't understand because, see, a woman can keep her shit intact. A man expands and explodes. He, he just, he's everywhere. And there's some women like that too. So the mentality of women over the course of the black community in my lifetime has changed. Most of the cats is doing the same thing and the women are doing the same thing, struggling to maintain. Um, yes, the black man has a lot of ability and a lot of capability to change the situation but the goals set for the young black male are narrow um, I don't know if you saw the you coon video but it's pretty much exactly like that the goals set for young black males is not actually what you think your goals was your goals was to achieve and not to need to achieve and not to need put yourself in a position to where you can earn a great living and have what you need to have without having to be dependent upon anything any entity or anyone the hood ghetto scrap mentality is to get it get it now stay strong be hard it's all about the hustle all of this is true but in the so-called game, the game has been twisted. Get it now, by all means necessary. It's about the hustle. The hustle itself does not necessarily mean on the corner selling dope, uh, trying to be a thug. That's what part of the hustle and, and the game is twisted. They assume that. You know, the hustle is go out there. No, the hustle is pick up them books and read them. The hustle is to, to, to put yourself in a position to have what other people have the exact same way they get it. The hustle is to live, quote me, this is what my father said, exactly like the white man within the white man's realm. And his attitude was this. Get it like the white man got it. That way you can keep it. But see, the thing is with the black mentality, the pimping, the hustling, and the drug dealing. It's true. You got to get it like the white man do. You don't see any brothers with helicopters and airplanes flying shit in on their private jets. You don't see that. But I know white people who own airplanes and who if we wanted to fly to Mexico right now, we could fly to Mexico. And when we fly back, nobody would be bothering us. I know people who know people I have people who have people. I am people to other people. And when you mixed up in so-called the game, when you look on the outside, because I've been retired, I ain't been in the game since I got married. I've been away from the game. The game is in me. Therefore, I speak in the game. People understand the way I speak because I speak a universal language. And I don't need many words to speak it. That is all part of the game. They call it the gift, the gab. Gab, speech. The Tower of Babel. We can keep going. People like you and I, 
You on this side of the road, I'm on this side of the road. I walk amongst both worlds. Why? I come from dirt nothing. Why am I in the suburbs? Because I have adapted. I don't have to hustle no more, but I know every hustler. Don't have to be in the street, but if I went back to the street, it would all come to me in two, three days. You step away from the game. You become a commentator. I'm on the sidelines like John Madden telling people what's going on in the game, giving play-by-plays during the game, and young people don't hear me because I don't play no more. Just like any old sports player. Once you lose it, you've lost it. And even though I've been stepped away from the game, I look back in the game and I see where everything went wrong. Where young guys stop thinking about going to school and getting a good job. Because every time we saw somebody with a job, they were struggling. And then when you did see somebody of substance with something or the one who climbed out, you saw them sparingly and they did not waste their time to leave the scene. In other words, I got mine. I live a better life. I'm the hell up out the ghetto. Don't worry about seeing me because I ain't coming back. People have that attitude and then that kid spawned from that person will be just like you. You see what it looked like. You know what it looked like and you wonder why is it that way? And me, like you told me a long time ago, it's my fault. And I agree with you. Some of the things I've done and little kids see me do have ruined their mind. I said it. People learn from example. And I appreciate your parents for not surrounding you around stupid people. Dummies. You may have seen the dummies, but you weren't surrounded by them. You weren't engulfed in their drama in everyday hood shit. I mean, bullshit. You got a sense you got a taste. Your cousins, your, your some of your friends, you've seen them. And you've learned from their mistakes. When other people walk amongst demons and devils and good guys and bad guys and become exactly what they walk amongst. So if you surround yourself with thieves and criminals, that's all you'll ever be. If you surround yourself with losers and people who can't make it past stage two, that's all you'll ever be. And what they used to say, those people you hang around, they're going to get you in trouble. That's not what they actually meant. They meant those people you hang around, you will inevitably become one of them. So if you know your friends as losers and dummies, then you give them that space and that time. But you do not become a part of that time in that space. I don't know if anybody understood what I just said, but in other words, in order to have a proper life and to be a good person and to do the best you can, you not only have to be good within yourself, but you have to try at least to put forth some kind of attempt to make sure your kids don't be the worst that you had ever seen. You also have to make an attempt to try to make the people around you, the people that you have to be around better, not just for your children, but for yourself. Because if I go hang with a bunch of fools that go in and out of jail, eventually I'll be in and out of jail. If I go hang around a bunch of nerds and squares and and kick it with them, am I gonna become a nerd or square? No, I just know some people who will become somebody one day and they will remember me and they will always know who I was to them and I benefit from that also sometimes it's not what you know but who you know the quality of people can get you a hell of a lot farther than the quantity of people because I know a whole bunch of bad people yeah if I go hang out with them say three days in a row I'll end up in a bad light not because of my actions not because of guilt by association because bad shit rubs off and eventually it'll wear you down thank you for being you if you learned anything from this pass it on